Scientists determined recently that the decade of the 90s was the hottest at least in the last millennium, and the planet is heating at a rate faster than any time in the last 10,000 years. But to restore our climate to a stable state ultimately requires rewiring the globe and replacing every oil burning furnace, every coal burning generating plant, every gasoline burning tower with high efficiency, low carbon, and renewable energy sources. Our fossil fuels have brought us to a level of prosperity unimaginable a century ago. Today they are propelling us forward into a century of disintegration. I think a properly structured energy transition holds the potential for an unprecedented worldwide economic boom. A global public works program to rewire the planet would create millions and millions of jobs all over the world. It would begin to reverse the widening gap between the North and South. It would allow developing economies to grow without regard to atmospheric limits and without the budgetary burden of imported oil. And I think in a very short time, you would see renewable energy eclipse high technology as the central driving engine of growth of the global economy. One of the problems in any development of alternatives is that if you get into the habit of using what you've been using and you made a big investment in it, then you want to amortize that investment and then make all the money you can possibly make after you've amortized it. And that's what the energy industries in this country are busily doing, amortizing their investment in the wrong, the non-renewable, non-sustainable energy sources. It's amazing how we seem to have this fixation on avoiding the opportunities for a sustainable society. It's time to stop avoiding them. We've got to subsidize the hydrogen future. The renewable and efficiency world, the solar hydrogen economy, could be upon us very much faster than the energy industries are now assuming. We're willing to concede at this point uh, a cost per kilowatt hour from nuclear power at roughly 10 cents a kilowatt hour, which is charitable. Uh, we now have wind technologies coming online, and the potential for wind energy in this country is virtually unlimited, as of course it is for solar with photovoltaic cells coming on very rapidly. If we can go to an efficiency and renewable-based energy economy, we'll be creating many, many thousands of jobs, and uh, we will be offering a much more stable environment for a healthy, prosperous economy. state energy companies, most of which are based in Texas and the Carolinas. These are the guys that control not only California's, but our nation's energy systems at this point. And they're holding us all hostage, not just here, but across the country. And in fact, they're holding people in other countries hostage as well. These guys and our California utilities, who we've supported for decades and thrown gobs of money at for decades, lobbied for a backroom deregulation deal in 1996 to create a market that they'd be able to make a killing on. And that's exactly what's happening. The long-term vision of the, of the electric utility industry is to get rid of all, elect, all regulation at all, to turn it to become what's in effect very much like the oil industry, just a free-for-all where the only regulation that occurs is in their favor. America is really in danger of losing its heart and soul, its commitment to democracy. You know, here, the, our president talk about now, it's as if 
letting a corporation poison the water next to the daycare center, you know, giving them free reign without any barriers in doing their business, that somehow that equals democracy. Um, free markets are different than democracy. Competitive markets were for. Free markets that are run just by one or two companies is simply not the way to have an economy or a democracy. have the highest asthma hospitalization rate in the state. And right now we're working on um, promoting health, the, um, the health of the Bayview Hunters Point. We're doing a rally to get the Bayview Hunters Point power plant shut down. This power plant should have been closed down years ago. I mean, years ago. It has not improved our lives at all. And the city has been very laxy-daisy on forcing them to do that. Instead, they, they've allowed Governor Davis to take our excess dollars and buy energy from the ISO, give it to pg &E to sell to us. By the way, those are our tax dollars that they're doing that with, and not just us as adults, but our children are now starting to really make it known that they understand, they're listening, they realize what's happening, and they want to see it end too. We're waking up a sleeping giant. The young people in the community are becoming aware of what's going on. They also know that pg and &E and a lot of this other contamination needs to get out of Bayview Hunters Point. Because what it has done, it has created the contaminants, it has created cancer, it has created the asthma, the hay fever, all the other sicknesses in, in Bayview Hunters Point. And it needs to stop. Shut down the power plant! 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 companies and the consumers better not have to shoulder you know the bailout that we smell coming down the pike. This has a very familiar tone and it's a similar strategy to what had occurred with the SNL scandal and the consumers and the taxpayers are going to have to front that bill like we did with the SNL scandal. Who's going to lose? It's not going to be the private sector. It's going to be the it's going to be the, the public sector, the people. And we say you cannot continue, you know, to privatize gains and socialize losses anymore. Deregulation has failed. It's nothing that we need to point out or tell anyone. We all know it. What we're asking the government to do is this time to make policy on the basis of the needs of the people of the state rather than on the needs of the utility companies, which was how we deregulated in the first place. Off me, prices started rising, went right through the roof. Now they are in orbit, it's a psychedelic spoof. I'm reading now by candlelight, wrapped in blankets day and night. PG and E, stop a pimping off me. Down in place, we are 
legislature goes forward with this, it means that for the next five months, we're going to be out in front of supermarkets collecting signatures. It's the legislature is going to have to stand up to this deal because what it looks like is a bailout, pure and simple. It looks like Governor Davis is going to dedicate a special tax, a bailout tax on our on our electricity bills to pay off their the utility company's mistakes and pay back these Texas-based energy generators who have been gouging California. We should force the utilities to get their parent companies to bail them out. Let's remember the parent companies have billions and billions of dollars in assets. PG&E alone has $32 billion in assets. Sell off the assets. $32 billion, you can bail out those utilities in no time. The parent company should be responsible, not us, the consumers, and not us, the taxpayers. And if we had representatives here in Sacramento and a governor that really was on the side of the people and not the side of the utility companies, that's what we would see happening. The sun has come out to welcome us and to bless this campaign. We are starting a lobbying effort, an emergency lobbying effort by the citizens of California. The public power campaign is here in the halls of the legislature to tell our senators and assembly women and men that we don't want dirty power. We want conservation, renewable energy, energy efficiency. We have an opportunity now because of this power crisis that is unprecedented. We have the technology. It is all ready to solve our problems. We have wind power, cheaper than natural gas right now, available very soon. Many wind farms could be up and running by summer. Solar power. We know that it's very difficult to operate in this environment. There is a lot of money floating around these halls. We, we believe that money can't really buy you love. And we know that our legislators would rather dance with the people of California who elected them than with the lobbyists for the dirty energy companies. So we have invited Senator John Burton. We're seeing red, bankrupt and led. But you know, wind, sun, earth, and water, conservation and public power will save us now at the 11th hour. Please stay true, public power campaign. Thank you, Senator Words from the heart, Senator? Brian make words from the heart, Senator? Words from the heart. to the listeners, uh, which is that I, Medea Benjamin with Global Exchange, as a person, as a person that a year ago um, knew nothing about these issues. I can say that when I started running for um, the Senate on the Green Party ticket and went to the, uh, went to the San Francisco Bay Guardians for their endorsement, um, the conversation went something like, well, what do you think of the PUC? And did you see what the ISO did? And something better would be the DWP, but we really need a mud. What do you think, Medea? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, right, whatever you say. I was an idiot, a total idiot. And I went out of there totally embarrassed. Um, I got their endorsement only because Diane Feinstein was so bad. But um, it took me a year to kind of get up to speed to know what the ISO is in addition to the International Socialist Organization. There's also an independent <laughs> systems operator. Um, and to understand why things like mud are so important and why local control yeah. is so important on all of this. And my point to the listeners in saying this is it is not rocket science. This is the basics of democracy. This is the basics of local democratic control. We in the Green Party, it's one of our major tenets, is local control. And I think for most people in this country, they believe in democracy with a small d, which means you don't let big, greedy corporations control your supply and put you in the kind of a noose that we're in today. There are three ways that we can get out of this. 
organize, organize, <laughs> organize. We got the people with the answers. We got the solutions right here. And if we can mobilize, we will win. So let's go for it. In 1996, um, in three weeks, the state embarked on an, an awful experiment and jumped off a cliff with no parachute. We were basically the pilot project for the Western Hemisphere on deregulation. Not only did we look at the deregulation discussion that was going on nationally and take a bit and piece from it, we just decided to go all the way on everything. Um, and this is counter to what you hear in the media, which is, oh, the only reason California's having a problem is that they didn't do it enough. Actually, the reason that we're having a problem is we did too much. The three largest, um, most powerful interests in the, in the state got together in the governor's office. This was the large customers and manufacturers who said, we're coming out of a recession, we need help with our fixed costs. The utilities who were not willing to give up their monopoly control um, and the independent energy producers who really wanted a piece of the utility monopoly control. So deregulation really became um, a deal cut in the governor's office. But what nobody really appreciated is in the meanwhile, in the years coming up to that moment, at the PUC, the utilities had been aggressively moving to create holding company structures, which would allow them basically to suck up all of the benefit of the utility into an unregulated enterprise and go forward with as much unabashed greed as their sister and brother generators in Texas. While the utility was giving up control of the monopoly, they were making sure that their holding company had both an incentive and an opportunity to manipulate an unregulated market. And here we are, and, and that's the scene today. We have a, a horizon of high prices in the future. Large corporations in, in out of state are making money hand over fist, and this is all about greed with a capital G. Every dollar spent for purchased power or purchased fuels from out of state robs the California economy of at least another dollar. The ratio goes anywhere from $2 to $5 in the multiplier of money lost when you send that dollar out of state. The way you spend your money and where you spend your money to buy energy is as important as the energy that you are purchasing. You know, Jerry Brown, in the 70s, he made an executive decision that California had renewable energy resources and it was silly not to go after it because it had great uh, industrial development benefit for California as well as all the other benefits. California led the world into the wind age and we have a relatively small resource compared to anywhere in the Midwest as well as other places in the United States. We have a fabulous climate for passive solar heating. 50 to 70 percent of your winter heat can be displaced. California, Nevada, Oregon, Washington, and Hawaii are blessed with all four of the renewable resources, the major ones. And yet every state has one, almost all have two, some have three. So we get a balance of renewable resource opportunities, but we have them all. I mean, we're amazingly blessed. Keep 15 to 27 cents in mind for what we paid for fossil fuel import, uh, generation last year. Geothermal, eight cents a kilowatt hour. Every geothermal contract has been a bargain that has been saving Californians money. Wind, hard to say uh, because we've got such a history in it, but I'd say averaging a nickel a kilowatt or so for new stuff that we install. Biomass, around 12 to 15 cents a kilowatt hour, but the biomass folks say if we turn them loose again, they can get it down to eight cents a kilowatt hour. Solar thermal electric, 15 cents per kilowatt hour right now. People always thought that was outrageous. Solar thermal electric people, I just came back from the National Solar Energy Forum in Washington, D.C. They are seriously talking about another 1,000 megawatts in Southern California at about 8 cents to 10 cents per kilowatt hour. And PV, everybody says, oh, PV, 5, 10, 100 times the expense of everything else. With California's present buy down, if you put PV on a 30-year mortgage, you've got 10 cent to 15 cent per kilowatt hour electricity on your roof. Renewable energy, $10 billion in new industry and new jobs in California just from the Jerry Brown program. The California's emission mix for all of our energy is the cleanest in the nation. Any gas-fired power plant you add to that, the cleanest one you can possibly add to that, dirties the California mix. The gas people are going around saying, add us because we clean up the air. Not true in California, folks. The cleanest gas plant you add actually 
diminishes the mix. We are already so clean. We're signing contracts like mad to build new power plants to come online starting in two years from now. The governor is giving lip service to conservation. He knows it's a good idea, let's put some money into it, but deep inside he doesn't understand the amount that we can harvest from conservation now. I used to be the California State Architect in better days uh, when we actually, actually the results are all around here because uh, we reduced energy consumption by two thirds. California is one giant solar farm. You just fly over to any place and you got rooftops, rooftops, rooftops. So we need to solarize over the next five years. We need to solarize all our public facilities, every school, every hospital, and so on. And part of that also is ending the bottleneck with these gangsters. Because once we have once we have photovoltaics, we have distributed network, and now we're not depending on El Paso gas to rob us. Now let me say a few things about conservation because that really has to be a shorter term fix. Uh, Davis has made one good move. He's hired Dave Freeman, who's the person who knows the most with the most integrity. The government has subsidized all of the supply side sources, the fossil fuels as well as nuclear. Uh, nuclear is, uh, you know, uh, I think stands out for its hypocrisy more than the others because uh, the nuclear people are now coming along and saying, hey, we've got the answer to global warming and uh, all we want is a market-oriented energy policy. This is what the Bush administration is saying. And yet if you know anything about the subject, you know that Wall Street is rated nuclear power too risky to use. You can't get it insured. And the government is providing uh, free insurance. Uh, you know, it's subsidizing it, uh, the, the, the technology in the most fundamental way. Uh, it, it couldn't be used if, if you didn't have the Price-Anderson Act. So how can anybody uh, with an IQ of over 100 and a straight face say that Nuclear power uh, is, is something to be used in a market-oriented energy policy. I've had the misfortune of probably having had as much experience with nuclear power as, as anyone else since I uh, came to the Tennessee Valley Authority and uh, they had 14 large reactors uh, under construction and we uh, shut eight of them down and then I came here to SMUD and uh, found that Another reactor had just been shut down. When was the last time an investor-owned utility came to your neighborhood and held a community meeting with their general manager or chief executive there to take your input? Perhaps the biggest decision that was ever made by our local community was the decision to shut down our nuclear plant, Rancho Seco. That went to a ballot here locally, and the public finally ended up voting to close it. The board honored the community's decision and closed the nuclear plant. We were the first large nuclear plant in the country to close, and the NRC was really not prepared what to do when a plant closed prematurely. We're looking at the two megawatts of SMUD's photovoltaic uh, power plant and I was saying if we could get each utility in the United States to do something on this order of magnitude or even half the size of this we could rapidly develop the solar industry in this country. Each utility could build one megawatt or even half a megawatt of photovoltaic uh, arrays and that would create enough demand so we could really lower the manufacturing costs and make the technology more accessible and more cost effective for the public. The contrast between what we just saw at Rancho Seco and what we have here is incredible. You look at the photovoltaic modules here and you realize their simplicity. You have no need for water to create power. You have no waste that's being produced. You have very few moving parts. The only thing that moves is the axis that these things are mounted on. They rotate from east to west as the sun crosses the horizon and create electricity. They're operating. These plants now are almost 10 years old and they continue to operate every day. 
very reliably. It's quite a right. contrast where you have backup systems to backup systems to prevent something from going wrong at the nuclear power plant and damaging the environment or damaging the community. It ended up that uh, the redundancy became so expensive that the nuclear plant had to be closed down. Meanwhile, this is becoming less and less costly as we learn how to better manufacture the modules and identify locations where it's most profitable to set them up. If you think back in the 1960s, people had some pretty grandiose plans. The idea of building three nuclear power plants here, hundreds of nuclear power plants along the coastline of California. There was an arrogance and a, and a hubris at, at that time, and people really didn't understand what they were getting into and what kind of responsibilities they were giving to the next generation. Uh, Fifteen years later, and we've taken that responsibility and beginning to take care of, of closing it down as safely as we can. It'll be interesting to come back here in 20 years and see what remains of the plant. But we'll have to take care of this place for a long, long, long time. So uh, I think that as the years have uh, gone on, uh, the analysis of the nuclear technology becomes clearer and clearer. Uh, it's been this country's so most expensive technological failure thus far. I think the, the bottom line is that this technology was advertised as too cheap to meter and it's turned out to be too expensive to use. Uh, in, other, in, order, in order to make it safe enough it becomes uneconomical. The visit to Chernobyl in April kind of distilled a lot of things that were floating around in, in my mind. You know, uh, The safety issue tends to be uh, sloughed off and brushed aside. And then you uh, go over and see that there's, there's millions of people whose lives are essentially wiped out and uh, an area the size of Northern California is contaminated uh, forever or at least for thousands of years and uh, uh, the enormity of the accident uh, hits you. Uh, where you got hundreds of thousands of people contaminated uh, you know, we can keep the lights on without running that kind of risk. I mean, you're, you're talking about the gene pool of the world. Uh, why do you want to pursue something that is inherently uh, uh, capable of, of providing a nuclear hell for large parts of this world? It just doesn't make sense except that there's all this money. The opposition uh, grew and grew and grew and it was because uh, the people uh, didn't play a role or wasn't even consulted or had no part in the development. It, it's, and one of the problems with nuclear power is it's inherently a centralized uh, uh, technology that requires a, a very strong central government. Uh, it requires a very large police force. And uh, of course uh, the solar option, and people should realize this, they keep sloughing away at solar power, but this is very important. The solar option is a complete alternative to the fossil fuels. And the reason I say that is, I know there's not much sun in North Dakota or Maine, but solar power can take ordinary water and break it into hydrogen and oxygen. And the hydrogen can be uh, moved in a pipeline just like natural gas is moved in a pipeline. So we can have a solar hydrogen energy economy that completely satisfies all of our energy needs. And hydrogen, when it's burned, uh, has a byproduct, you know, water. <laughs> uh, so there's no pollution. And it can be used in fuel cells, ideally, and the fuel cells may power cars. So the technology for a uh, cleaner, uh, and uh, more economical uh, energy economy is there. We have the coral reefs dying at an unprecedented rate off the Florida coast. We have mother's milk so laden with DDT, dieldrin, PCBs that if it were bottled and sold it would be subject to ban by the FDA. You know, you don't have to really go into the kind of mm, the computer model about will global warming happen, how soon, and blah blah blah. You can just deal with the here and now and we, it would seem the only sensible course of action were to use clean, sustainable 
fuels, alternative energy, things that work today for the long run and get away from this short-term greed. This house proves that there are alternatives available today. Uh, the wind turbine that I own in Tehachapi proves that wind power is very viable in California. My power here uh, that is generated by photovoltaics is, uh, it turns out it's exactly the same price as nuclear <laughs> without any of the accompanying waste. Yes, there are toxics involved in the production of solar panels. That's like comparing a teaspoon to a tanker truck. There's so little and they are sealed uh, up in the panels there and uh, in a non-toxic stable state. I'll see you in a little while, okay? Bye-bye. The computer, uh, all the office equipment is solar powered. The laser jet printer, the dot matrix, the fax machine behind over there, it all runs uh, very nicely on solar power. Technology that works, our favorite kind. This bicycle is hooked up to the same battery array where the solar power is stored. Since I have this system in place anyway, I've hooked up exercise equipment so that rather than waste my energy that I'm generating while exercising and making heat and a little friction pad in a bike or wasting it in some other fashion, I actually use it. I'm generating about three amps now at 120 volts. That's usable power. What we have here is the array um, where all the solar panels come in and all the power is stored in these batteries. All the power comes in from the panels into this array, it's stored in the batteries, it goes into this black box and it's changed from DC power to AC power. 120 volt DC becomes 120 volt AC and it runs quite effectively. It's running my whole house now, I'm off the grid. So these things exist, and I think we should simply move away from the dangerous nuclear power and even from the uh, equally dangerous, in some ways, fossil fuel life that we've made for ourselves and move to clean, sustainable energy like wind and solar. That seems to be the future, and not just the future. As you can see, it's the present. To me, it's a sorry sight to see California in 25 years have gone from being the leader in all these areas to now just being the joke. And we have to turn that around, and I, and I, think, we, I think we're going to do it. We have to do it. I think if you go down the halls of the legislature right now, you will see the fossil fuel suits in large numbers in every legislative office. And uh, we need to have thousands and thousands of people. We need to close down the legislature until they start to make some sense. The sun is free. <laughs> yeah. And, and you've got a and lot and of it. A lot of it. Yeah, okay. Well, so we're giving Paul a copy of this book, too, okay. that has an excellent description okay. of the development of the modern uh, electrical okay. uh, industry yeah. here. Is this for me? Yeah. Oh. We... Really? Thank you very much. Thank you. To answer whatever happened to solar, we had to say, who runs the energy industry and to answer that we had to say who runs the damn country the whole country and so and you realize really the biggest single interest or probably economic interest is probably uh, 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 the oil industry and, and the energy industry and, and it's really it's best to think of it as a cartel in its many different branches when you discuss electricity you're discussing the oil industry and let me tell you why you're discussing the same cartel because last time I looked at it in 95 the six biggest producers of natural gas, and most of the electricity in California, I don't know if it's 70 or 80 percent, comes from natural gas generation. So you're, you're talking about an oil industry product. And uh, this has become crystal clear in this recent crisis. So the very thought that you know, we'd have a democracy where my vote would be equal to the head of the utility companies is a sham. Um, you know, when they come into the state house, they represent you know tens of millions of dollars of contribution and lobbying money, uh, and certainly uh, have made a, a mockery of the of democracy. It's, it's a dollar democracy. Those with the most dollars are able to buy influence and, and make a sham of the very promise we share as Americans that we're supposed to 
define our own fate or future through, through our representatives. In the long run, the oil and energy companies, um, you either own them or they'll own you. You know, the, the fact of the matter is that, that uh, you know, freedom and independence also has to do with getting independent from giant economic interests that are stealing from us. Across the country, there are about 2,000 locally owned, locally controlled uh, public power systems. They exist uh, in 49 of the 50 states. There are some large examples uh, with which I'm sure you're familiar. Uh, Sacramento Municipal Utility District, Los Angeles Department of Water and Power is the largest public power system in the country, a completely vertically integrated electric utility. There are other large systems like San Antonio, Texas, Austin, Texas, Gainesville, Florida, uh, Orlando, Florida, Jacksonville, uh, Seattle, Tacoma, Washington. There are state agencies like the New York Power Authority. There's a power authority in, in uh, uh, South Carolina, another in Texas, one in Oklahoma. Uh, there are municipal utility districts, public utility districts. In Oregon, there are people's utility districts. Uh, many different forms and sizes. Collectively, public power serves about 15% of the total consumer load in the United States, one in seven. Uh, electric consumers receives power from a public power system. Uh, we have about 11 or 12 percent of the installed generation capacity in the United States. As you can see, public power is a net buyer in the wholesale market. Uh, and of course, that's one of the uh, grave concerns that we have from public power's perspective about what's happening here in California and elsewhere. Um, on average, public power's rates are lower than uh, investor-owned utilities, and that uh, is not because of subsidies that people allege that we receive, but because we operate on a not-for-profit basis. Uh, and in fact, uh, records do reveal that public power systems are in fact more efficient in managing their utility operations than investor-owned utilities. Uh, and that uh, uh, runs against common wisdom, but in fact, it's, uh, it's the truth. Defining characteristics of public power, uh, the single most uh, significant defining characteristic is local control. It gives the people in a community the opportunity to decide what best meets their own needs in terms of infrastructure, power supply, renewable energy choices, energy conservation, and so forth. And that has been uh, the fundamental uh, principle of public power since it was created uh, back in 1882. Public power and private power systems grew up together with the industry, and we have been around for 100 and, uh, 120 years now. There are over 300 public power systems that are over 100 years old. So it's an institution with staying power, and an institution I think that you realize is still currently relevant in today's environment. Now seems like the ideal time in this state, and perhaps other states, take a very careful look at what kind of obstacles have been placed in the path of communities that want to explore the public power option uh, because this is the ideal time to go to the legislature and say don't foreclose our options uh, and to the extent that they have been foreclosed in the past let's roll back those laws let's make sure that communities through local democracy can do what uh, they want to do to take charge of uh, their own uh, utility operations. Today on The Electric Company, people get screwed by energy corporations and learn to tell the ruling class. Hey, you guys! We're gonna turn it off! We're gonna turn it off your power! We're gonna bring on the night in the middle of day, so you will pay. We're gonna turn it off every hour on the hour. We're gonna make you choke and you go broke while you're trying to pay the higher rate. We're gonna bring them up. You're gonna bring up a profit. You're gonna bail us out, long as it can be. Try and stop the dream of the electric company. The electric company, oh yeah. The electric company. Things were 
going so well, these goddamn power politicians want more and threaten my chances for re-election. What's a governor to do? Come on in, fellas. <laughs> Warning, the system is totally maxed out. The RPs are coming. <gasps> the rolling blackout. <laughs> I'm gonna blacken out some electrical asses. Alameda County? Ah! San Francisco? Ah! Marin County? Ah! Oh, everybody! Ah! Stop! Okay, I'll do whatever you want. You'll agree to everything. <laughs> yes. The $10 billion bailout. Yes. The $10 billion in new bonds? Yes. And no more rate freeze? Yeah. Good work, boys. Thanks, boss. Next time, Gravy, it's your kneecaps. <laughs> yeah. Now. Public power now. Public power now. Public power now. There is so much going on in secrecy in this town that the civil service people over at the legislative analyst office told us all of these bills and all of the governor's propositions have been going through in secret. The governor puts out a press release on Friday. Supposedly the next week, he's going to give away 10, 20, 30 billion of our dollars. Do we, are we going to let him do that without a bite? No! what kind of power we have in the future. We would be able to demand solar power, wind power, clean yeah! renewable energy. There is no reason for us to put up with these generators gouging us. We could be taking over those plants. Yeah, take them over! Can you spell eminent domain? We would get our democracy back. Yeah! Yeah! yeah. That's what public power is really about. The second meaning of public power is that it's the public's power. We need to get it back. Public power now. Public power now. I want to uh, have some words about how really easy it is, how feasible it would be for uh, the citizens of California to really realize public power across the state. What could we have bought for this $40 billion? Well, through eminent domain, we could have acquired the entire system of PG&E, Southern California Edison, and San Diego Gas and Electric. That's according to the market assessed value of the Board of Equalization. So, we can continue bailing out and paying off the cartel, or we can seize this by eminent domain. It'd be a lot cheaper to seize it according to the assessed market value. The other important thing that we can do is get our politicians and pass a statewide initiative to have a democratically elected uh, power authority and also PUC so that these people who regulate our rates or who would run the state-owned system would be directly accountable to the people. In San Francisco, it looks like we're going to make a municipal utility happen. And the major event that took place that made that possible was district elections. And again, that's the importance of local control through democracy. And it can also happen statewide, too. But anyway, we were able to break the political machine that controlled the city and county of San Francisco. And right now, we not only have control of the Board of Supervisors, but we also have control of the local agency formation commission. And between having con uh, local democratic control of those two agencies, we are going to bring uh, public power to the city and county of San Francisco. And we're also working to create public power through eliminating the barriers in the state code. Thanks very much. Public power now. When PG&E, when they lose a lot of money, then they want us to pay for it. But when they gain a lot of money, then they don't share it with us. They share their losses and 
and but then they don't share any of their games. And it's really hypocritical and mean of them. He's the CEO of PG&E. I think he should go to jail, but I don't think he should get the death penalty because I don't believe in the death penalty. But I do think he should be punished for ripping off people and not and disobeying the law. He runs his company into bankruptcy and then he gives himself a two million dollar raise. If I was old enough and my parents would let me, I'd say he was a jerk. We will reconvene. What you are doing today is marking the beginning of a ratepayer revolution in this state. You have not listened to us before on March 27th when you voted for the rate hikes without going out and talking to the people. Then you went around this week talking to the people, say, who should we screw first? The small residential customers, or should we screw the businesses that'll pass on their rate hikes to the small residential customers, or should we screw the large businesses that will pass on their rate hikes to the small residential customers? We know that any rate hike that you will impose will screw us, the small residential customers. We know the utility companies have billions of dollars. Let them bail themselves out. We know the solutions here, which is take over the generator plants, put them in the hands of the public, and let the utilities bail themselves out of their debts. What you are doing is calling on us, the consumers, to bail out greedy, mismanaged companies. You know it well. It is your job to stand up for us, not to stand up for the companies. When are you going to do the right thing? If you call today for this massive increase, the most massive increase in the history of California, you will be declaring war on the people of California. Absolutely! So we say that you must reach down into your soul, into your conscience. Think what you are about to do today. Think what you have heard from five people up and down this state. And you cannot, in good conscience, vote for the rate increases that you have been talking about. You must stand up for us. Any consumer here that agrees with me, no rate hikes, stand up now. No rate hikes. No rate hikes. No rate hikes. No Governor can resolve this in three months. Condemn these generators, take them over, and worry about how much uh, uh, the companies get, the generators get paid over the next five or ten years. Say it's a matter of public need and necessity. That's that's how you start, and you establish the principle of uh, of uh, popular sovereignty, of democratic sovereignty over these entities. After all, they're chartered by the state, and, and uh, you know they 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 have certain duties to the people. They're not. They're not, they don't, shouldn't have civil rights like a, a person has civil rights. If the governor was smart, uh, he'd be talking about not just price caps for these giant wholesalers who are stealing from you, but he'd also be talking about the solar loan fund and as importantly as anything, um, making it easier for you know, cities like San Francisco uh, and towns and cities throughout the great state of California actually convert to municipally owned utilities. The evidence is in. As the lights are going off all across the state, Sacramento's lights are on, LA's lights are on, and they're on at a price point that's 30 and 40 percent cheaper. Actually, after deregulation, the private market um, really destroyed our energy system out here, and it needs not just cash going into more fat cats' hands that are only getting us further addicted to oil and fossil fuels, but rather energy independence measures that allow the people to own their utility companies locally uh, and therefore make a much larger contribution to conservation and solar and the like. But we can do it, but we have to change as a society. We have to work together. We have to take the country back 
and take back control, and that's what public power is all about. That's what solar energy is about. So now, can't we all just get along? No! Let me tell you, you saw us out once too often. Public power now! Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, you think it's gonna be that easy, huh? Well, feel the wrath of my true energy power!